So in an attempt to join the ranks of the famous internet personalities, I decided that I should help out with Mr. Enter, taking each atrocity in Spongebob's episode catalog down a peg. Me, I found the perfect episode to start off with, Kenny the Cat, a Biz Markey vehicle written by a relative newcomer by the name of Blake Lemons, which is always a good sign. I don't know about you, but there's always this glimmer of hope that comes with a new writer writing Spongebob. Well, leave it to the dream team of Zeus Service and Casey Alexander to slice and dice our hopes into oblivion. Belts up, gang. We're gonna see what the damage is. We start off with Spongebob taking in a deep breath and holding it for an extended period of time to the annoyance of Squidward. Oh good, at least now we know that Megward the Wizard card's still being played in the offices of Viacom. He does the exact same stunt again and goes down for the count. And here's a surprise, Mr. Krabs shows genuine concern after the guy passes out! And Spongebob explains why he's doing it a lot as of late. Sorry Mr. Krabs, I was merely emulating my latest media obsession. So Spongebob's obsessed with a feline Michael Phelps. Is that really relevant at all? And by holding his breath for a scientifically impossible amount of time, he unwittingly allows a good number of those wacky corporations to milk his fame dry with more than enough merchandise to allow a minute's worth of Nothing happening. Never noticed it. Hmm. You haven't seen him in your wallet? Mm. He won it? What's he been doing in there? Oh, he's on all the new $50 bills. Oh good, a celebrity got on the $50 bill! I wonder how long until Spongebob winds up on the $50 bill. After all, Viacom practically owns the United States since they're still around after riding Spongebob into the ground, letting Butch Hartman run fairly odd parents into the ground, and, you know, Brickleberry. Ooh, that Kenny the Cat! Spongebob tells Mr. Krabs that Kenny's heading to Bikini Bottom on the following morning, and he comes up with his usual brand of cockamini scheme. Spongebob checks in with Sandy to see if she can help, but what we're treated to is Zeus Service's contribution to the episode. Aren't cats and squirrels basically the same thing? We are both mammals, but that is where the similarities end! Cats are no good scoundrels, and I ain't never trusted one of them! Thinly veiled racism! Yep, that's Zeus Service alright! Racism aside, Sandy states the obvious thing that mammals can't breathe underwater for as long as Kenny says he has. Not even her, in a brief nod to the pre-movie era. Yeah, I know it's as broad as miraculous as this man's career! So Spongebob and his best friend Patrick go to wait for Kenny's arrival at 10 in the morning. Yeah, 14 hours is cutting it close, but I had to work all day. Yeah, Spongebob, you do realize that Mr. Krabs sending you out to fetch Kenny and his fan base and send him to the Krusty Krab probably qualifies as work, right? And just because it was so charming the first time around, we have to witness another minute's worth of Nothing Happening. There you are, Pocket Taco. That line might end up on a Nickelodeon billboard near its HQ. Apologies to the Adventure Time cast, crew, and characters in advance. While they go stargazing, Patrick rightfully questions if Spongebob's obsession with Kenny is all that healthy as the guy's face is painted along with his to look like Kenny. This, uh, is getting creepy. Hey buddy, check it out. Oh Jesus God! I am dead freaking serious. That might give the faces in face freeze a run for its money. What the hell, man? What the actual hell? For once, Pat, you're actually right! I mean, yeah, sure, this is the you that tried to dry clean Gary with a fucking blowtorch. But this diluted obsession that. Deep Dash! On it. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Thanks! Don't mention it. Patrick flees at the sight of SpongeBob's butt tattoo. This isn't funny! The next morning sees him meeting his idol. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time you've all been waiting for. Kenny the Cat will do his signature walk. After asking Kenny to sign his spatula, 
SpongeBob suggests he head to the Krusty Krab as he's feeling a bit hungry. His response? So it looks like the mission was a complete success. Does this mean that the episode's done? Fast to the no boy, we still got six minutes left. Now it's time for the liar reveal plot that's been rehashed a billion times before and will be rehashed a billion times afterward. This gets real uncomfortable after a while. Oh there you are, Biz! Nice to see you've graduated from Yo Gabba Gabba. Witnessing Kenny's fruity little trick, Spongebob's panties get in a twist as usual, leading to a depressing bit of Nothing happening. Oh well, time to move on. Yes, I don't need my Kenny the Cat fan club membership card anymore. Or these Kenny the Cat posters. Oh, Kenny, how could you? Get on with it! Kenny explains his backstory and, wouldn't you know it, it's the exact same give the gift of hope, back home I'm nobody, Schultz, the corporate star screams of entertainment have regurgitated a hundred times before and will regurgitate a hundred times afterward. And if making the world a happier place makes me a criminal, <laughs> then lock me up and so away the key. Zeus, a moment requires attachment to its characters for it to work. If we're not attached to the specific character, the moment's worth diddly. And if you had let Mr. Lemons do his job, then we wouldn't be right where we are now. SpongeBob reluctantly promises to keep the secret as Kenny returns to his audience. And guess who shows up? Hi, Kenny. Mind if I get your signature? Gee, it sure is nice to meet another air-breathing, warm-blooded varmint down here. Sandy builds up to an anti-climax by recapping basic mammalian biology and Kenny cracks under the pressure. Said anti-climax shoes out the customers, and later that day, Kenny says his goodbyes, having learned to be himself. Most cats hate water, right? Well, you can be the cat that likes water. That way you're still special. I like it! Just get out of here already. You can never trust a cat. Or is it a dog? Way to pass the buck, Miss Cheeks. I don't know how Zeus fucked it up. There's effort put into this. You don't see the beatboxing guy from Yo Gabba Gabba and Kenny. Sure, he's a grade-A prick like the rest of Bikini Bottom at this point, but hey, he's a character instead of a paycheck waiting to be cashed by whatever celebrity they could find. Though I can't help but scratch the itch that this was a major I missed the opportunity for an actual athlete to voice a character instead of, you know the beatboxing guy from Yo Gabba Gabba. Hell, I can name a couple athletes that would be perfect to voice Kenny. Again, Michael Phelps, or maybe Lance Wasted on Life Armstrong if they wanted to seize the whole steroid allegory opportunity. But as it stands, there's still good in this episode. SpongeBob, Patrick, and hell, even Mr. Krabs are relatively in character. But the incredibly racist Scandy Cheeks and each minute's worth of nothing happening is the kind of shtick that runs this show over the edge into atrocity territory. I really want to like this episode, I really do. We would have had something worth liking about Spongebob Season 9 if it weren't for those jackasses pandering to your meddling kids and your pesky dog, too. Boss? Mom ordered pizza if you want some. Oh good, I'm starving. And I have a headache. Something wrong. Oh, the usual. Had to review a disappointing Spongebob episode from its ninth season. Well hey, look on the bright side. At least it isn't- STOP! Why don't you want to say its name? Because after so many sleepless nights, I have finally shut off the atrocities of the other Nicktoon from my subconscious and I do not want the worst of the dogs from this series infecting my already broken psyche. As he sings the most infectious theme song in the world by being forced to review an episode of said series merely because I have heard the title once more. You mean 
fairly odd parents?